All right, we're gonna do something today, or this evening rather, it's corridor six, that I hadn't done before. And that's gonna be, I'm gonna pull the mower with the Massey Ferguson. And this is gonna be the last of my first cutting hay. What I'm gonna mow this evening is about 20 acres left and I'm gonna mow it this evening. The weather's supposed to be pretty good for the next four days, so I'm gonna go ahead and mow it. It is uh, June the 27th. I normally like to have all my first cutting done way before now, but it just has not been possible with the, with the weather we've had. So, uh, we've had uh, two weather breaks to get up hay, just two. And uh, the first one I got up about 50 acres. The second one I got up about 30 acres. And this last one I'll be getting up about 20. I do approximately 100 acres of hay and that's all I do. Um, and that's all I really have time to do. So with all the other things that I do. People want, uh, occasionally people try to give me more land. Sometimes I'll take it if it's really good. Um, but most of the time, if it's going to be a hassle, I just don't even bother with it because I've already got so much other stuff to do. It has to be in a good location too. I like for them to be close to home. These two that I'm going to do, the reason they're kind of left to last is because they're about uh, six or seven miles away from here and it just takes a lot of time to get everything out there and do it and get everything back and get the hay back especially where I square bale it you know it takes a lot of time to get all the square bales home and unloaded and just all the hauling everything uh, but anyway one of the fields is really good and the other field is not far from the really good field so it, it's pretty steep the, the second field's pretty steep but it's it's still a decent field other than that puts off good hay uh, so yeah I want to try out the the 7230 on the 4710 for the first time I don't know how it's going to do I feel like it'll do good on the flat field but I don't know what's going to happen when I get in the steep field I'm sure I'll be geared way down getting up some of those steep hills because even in the T5 I have to gear gear down right smart to get up some of the some of the steep hills and uh but that's all right uh you know the tn95 was just tractor replaced it didn't like a disc bind much i i mowed with it occasionally but it didn't like it i don't think i ever tried it after i turned the horsepower up pretty sure it didn't but uh it was a uh, 83 horsepower on the shaft before i turned it up and it didn't like the mower it didn't have enough gears for the mower either because it was either too fast or too slow uh, i mean you could you could mow in the lower gear just fine with the horsepower it had but you felt like you wasn't hardly moving and then you go to the next gear up and it was too fast for the horsepower it had and so anyway we'll see how this tractor does it's geared a little different even though it's still a 12 speed this one's geared a little different and uh but yeah i don't have the wind rowers on the the mower i take those off because it stores easier for one in the shed and two i like to leave it as wide as possible i used to have uh, these right here off but what was happening was is it would throw the hay all the way over here which is didn't hurt anything I mean other than there was nowhere on the ground that there was a clear spot and this mower if it doesn't have a clear spot to run this this uh, section of the mower right here in and I don't, what I mean by a clear spot is a, a spot on the ground that there's no hay. This mower is so close to the ground right here. See, here's where it runs on the ground. And there is a skid pan right here. 
and a gearbox right here. Now what happens is, is it's so this runs so close to the ground, if there's not a clear area right here for this to run, then uh, yes, I'm laying on the ground with y'all. Uh, uh, what happens is, is it starts dragging a pile of hay right here. And that is very irritating. So I put the put those pieces back on just to narrow it up enough that I would have a clear spot to run that section in. So it doesn't always drag, but if you start running it over a bunch of hay, especially if the hay is heavy, it will start dragging. It'll start dragging it up into a pile. Next thing you know, you got a big mess. So you got to watch that with this mower. My old mower didn't do that. So that's that's about the only thing that I don't like about this mower. The only thing I'm disappointed about with it. Uh, what I had before was a 411. But uh, this one, this one right here is a H7230. The 411 was a coon design, I believe. This is is a pretty sure all New Holland design with the individual modules. Well, anyway, if you look at a coon, they're completely different. This is completely different from from a coon is now. So, uh, anyway. I'm going to go get some supper. It's about 6 o'clock. It's almost 6 o'clock. My wife said she was going to have supper ready at 6. Uh, it just got done raining, so I let the ground drain as much as I can. That's the way I like it. I like it. I like it. When they're calling for uh, dry weather, I like to see that last good rain uh, before I go mow because... It just seems like it just seems like there's always that last rain before the good weather, and we just got it just a few minutes ago. Uh, if there's not a rain, if it's calling for 80% today and 10% tomorrow, and you don't get that rain, it'll probably come tomorrow. So I like to see that good rain go come through and go on, and then most of the time it'll be clear. Uh, like they say it will be and uh, I just pray a lot about it too so that's and that always seems to help or I know it helps so anyway I'm gonna go get some supper and then we're gonna go try this massy person on this disc bag. see y'all all right we're getting here to the first field I'm trying to snake this uh, snake this machine up this little road here with all the trees beating on my cab um, we gotta get up here between the between the trees and this house and I haven't been to this field since I put fertilizer on it so I hope it's still here I feel certain that it is we'll watch the trees this is the steep field. I was going to go do the flat field first, but this field's a little more technical, a little more difficult. So I'm going to do it while it's daylight, and then I'll go mow the good flat field when it's uh, dark tonight. Because this is going to take two hours here, and then it'll take a couple hours over there. So yeah, let's see what we got here. It looks pretty good. It's got a few weeds in it, but it's there. Are, it's only down here in this corner. Let's get out of this. It always has a few weeds right here in this corner. One thing I do, I don't typically spray weeds, and I don't typically have a whole lot of weeds. And but dang, the hay looks really good to be. Uh, this is this is Timothy here, and it's not turned brown. And it's here's one that, that the seeds are starting to fall off of. But it's not bad for as late as it is. I was expecting it to be extremely in extremely bad shape, but it doesn't look bad at all. I mean, and down in here it's still really green. 
So, I think this is going to make pretty good hay. I know the sun is right in their face. But this field isn't that bad. This field over here, these two fields join up there at just a little spot up here at the end of these trees. But this, there's another whole field over here. And it, it's really, it's one field, but it's kind of two fields because of the, because it's only joined at one little spot. So I kind of count them as separate fields. But this field over here has got a really bad steep place in it. And that's what I'm wondering how this tractor is going to handle it. But we're going to see right here real quick. Okay, so let's get this rig unfolded and get it wound up. I'm going to put it in low range. I don't know if that's what I need or not. I feel like it'll be on this field. Let's turn the flashers off so I ain't got to look at those things. Let's wind her up. Get the auto throttle. It's definitely wider in here than it is with the T5. That's just weird to me. tractors in the hay uh, and uh, you know they just don't get cleaned very often it's just the way it is so some of these sharp turns in the beginning here I like to use the hydraulics to help steer the mower and get closer into the to, to the 90 degree turns. It does not hurt this particular mower. You can use the hydraulics to swing it in while you're running it all the way in if you want to. It actually says it helps keep uh, move the grease around in the uh, CV joints in the PTO. It helps lubricate them if you if you do move the head with the hydraulics occasionally it's actually good for the PTO so uh, I do use them occasionally to help me get around poles and turns I don't just stick it out there and leave it all the time. it is very helpful to get around like power poles and trees that are out in the middle of the uh, field sometimes. Right now I'm running 4.2, which is pretty slow. But we're getting over here to the steep part. I don't normally go fast on the first round or so, or the back swarth. we're burning about three gallons an hour on the computer but that's instant it doesn't give an average you have to average it yourself
Okay, we are getting ready. We are going up a hill here. I know this don't look like nothing on this, but we're going, you're going to hear the tractor start pulling down and I'm probably going to have to catch another gear because it gets really steep right here. This flattens out for just a second and now we're going to get really steep again. I'm going to hold the camera level. Yeah, we're going to have to go down a gear. May have to go down one more gear. No, I believe she's going to pull through it. At 2.5, 2.7, 2.9. We're going back up three miles an hour. 3.1. I wish I could show y'all how steep this is, but it's just not possible on camera. I hate that. Ooh, that sun's bright. Jeez, I can't see nothing. Getting to the close to the top of the hill here. It's a it's a good good little pull up this hill. We'll probably go back up a gear now. I'm gonna go ahead and shift. There we go. Oh yeah, now we're moving again. What I normally do is, even though this is kind of two separate fields with a small connector, I go around the whole place. I go around both fields all at the same at one time. I go around, I go around them a couple times. Then I'll do the back forth, and then I'll go over in the in the first field, and I'll I'll finish it off, and then I'll go into the second field and I'll finish it off. But I like to go around the whole thing to begin with. That's what I'm right here is where they connect together. I'll show you as soon as we get around this turn. Right here, it's a little hole that they connect together with. This is the only place these two fields touch. I need to cut some tree limbs back. I did that some last year, but I need to cut some more back. So this tractor is getting to be, getting to have about 100, well it had 112 hours on it when I left the house with it. So it's getting a few hours on it now. I'm thinking about doing a, a review, 100 hour, well it's more than 100 hours now, but I was thinking about doing a 100 hour review. So uh, I've done past that, but I'm gonna, I plan on doing a review here before too long on this tractor about how things I like and things I don't like and for the most part I like most everything about this tractor. It's not a bad tractor at all for the money. I can tell you that. I, somebody asked me if I would buy it and buy it again in the comments. And my answer to that is yes I would buy it again so far. I don't have any reason. There's not any reason why I wouldn't buy it again. Either 
single option you get has the regular 540. But you either get 540 with 540E or you get 540 with 1000. And this tractor has 1000 RPM PTO. So, no, it doesn't have 540E, but it is optional on this series tractor. If you don't have anything that's 1000 RPM and you'd rather have the E, you can get this tractor with the E on it. Um, the E, you would have to be doing something pretty light duty PTO wise, like heading uh, with, 80, with 80 PTO, or well, else 88 horsepower PTO tractor is what this is. You ain't going to be doing a whole lot of PTO work in 540E that's much over heading or something pretty light uh, because. You know, like this mower, you wouldn't be able to use E with it unless you were going downhill all the time, I would think. My T5, I can run it in E on it, but I can't in a field like this. The next field I'm going to, I can run my T5 on E, 540E with this, uh, with this mower. But not, not most places I mow, I can't. So. This tractor has even less power than the T5. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's got a lot less power because it weighs less. But, you know, when you hook PTO implement to it, you know, it's got less horsepower, so it's not even gonna, it's not gonna do as well in 540E as even the T5. I don't, I don't round bail with the T5 and 540E. Uh, round bail, it takes a lot of power. I could square bail with the T5 and 540E, but it makes the clunking noise in the transmission even worse. And, uh, you know, I was talking about that clunking noise when I was square bailing, and then you could hear it when my wife was square bailing. Uh, if you use 540E, it's even worse. So I don't use 540E on the T5 while square bailing. Uh, something to do with there's some slack, there's some slop, slop, or slack, whatever you want to call it, in the drive line somewhere on that tractor. Now, whether it's normal or not is to be that's to be debatable, I guess. Uh, how much slack is normal? I don't know, but anyway, the deal is. You know, it makes a noise. Every time the plunger strokes, it puts pressure on the PTO. Well, as long as there's constant pressure, like bowing, you, there's no noise at all. But with the baler, once the plunger is, has went back and, and punched the hay in there, and then it, there is no pressure for a second, the PT, that's what the flywheel's there for. Well, the flywheel's to keep the, the momentum of the PTO up because, uh, you know, it free wheels for a second and then it has to go, it has to shove hay in there. It free wheels and shoves hay in there. So when it's free wheeling, it actually takes pressure off the PTO of the tractor and is overrunning it, overrunning the PTO slightly. So it, you know, it, it causes a, uh, you know, you got a load and then you don't have a load, and a load and a no load, load no load. So there's enough slack in the PTO that is causing that noise. And uh, for some reason, 540E amplifies it, so I don't use it. Now, I've been wanting to try the, the, the baler on this tractor. I feel like it'll be a lot quieter on this tractor because the PTO and the drive lines made completely different. It was all, the uh, square baler will always run quiet on the TN95. It didn't have any noise in it. Um, but it was completely designed completely different. The transmission in that T5 is all power shift and everything and the way it's designed. Uh, it just has, has some force slack in it than I think it should, but anyway. I'm on the second round now. Crawling around this field. 
sun's going down. Of course, it's getting closer to me going down. But I'll check back with y'all here in a little bit once I get the, get the back forth out of the way. And I'm going to, I got to go up this steep hill again. We're kind of going across the bottom of the field. It's not too, it's too bad steep here. I am holding the camera level. You can see that the tractor's leaning a little bit, but the bad steep part's just over the over the knoll right there. This is a pretty place. I have seen a coyote here while I was mowing before. been a couple different places I've seen coyotes while I was mowing. Alright, we're getting ready to go back uphill again here. I'll check back to y'all here in a little bit. Alright, so here is a good example of what I was talking about. About wadding hay up under the corner here. See it drug the hay off out from right here. What I'm doing is the back swarth right here. And this edge of the machine is running on this windrow a little bit and uh it grabbed it up now it's up underneath it i mean all i gotta do is raise it up and back up get it off of it but the thing is is getting getting started again mowing without taking it with you again that's the aggravating part anyway i wanted to show you that so you can see what i was talking about all right so we're finishing up the uh the flatter of these two fields here that's in this one area and then I still got to do the steep part the steep field and then I get to go to the nice flat field but uh, I'm running right now I've been running in high range and there is a little bit of a hill right here I'm going up now I'm running about five miles an hour up this hill but when I'm running across the hill or flat or it's pretty flat and going downhill I'm running at high second which is 6.5 miles an hour and that's pretty good um, this mower is 10 foot 4 inches wide so it's quite a bit of mower for an 88 horsepower PTO horsepower tractor good with it. It does 10 times better than the TN95 did because it's got better gear ratios to, uh, to work with. So, right now I'm running 6.5 miles an hour which is pretty fast for the as rough as this field is. The next field I'm going to, I can I can get up to like 10 miles an hour, 10 and 11 miles an hour with the uh, T5. And I don't know that this tractor can do that. But. I'm using the clutch button to downshift one gear goes to uh, high first and then when I get to the top of this hill I go back to high second now when I go by, back over the other field I'm going to have to go to low range and uh, use uh, I'm using sixth gear where it's flat and then I'll be using fifth and fourth where it gets really steep so, in conclusion, I guess, as far as mowing with this tractor, it can mow. It has no problem running this mower when, it, when it's flat to moderate, moderately steep ground. When it gets really steep, um, you gotta go to, go to the low side and over there in the steepest part, which is really steep. A lot of people won't even bail places that are as steep as what I'm mowing here. But uh, I was down to like three miles an hour coming up that hill in, in the steepest part. So, 
but the T5 can't do a whole lot better. I think it can do about four, maybe a little bit more than four, going up the same hill. So it doesn't do a whole lot better. And it's 100 PTO horsepower. So this tractor does fine with this motor. If I was mowing a little bit flatter ground, you, you wouldn't have any complaint at all running this mower. So that's, I'm not really complaining because even with the steep hills, it's doing pretty good. And uh, I didn't buy this tractor to mow with anyway, but I did want to try it and see what it does with the mower. And actually, I'm pretty surprised at how it does with it because compared to the TN95 I had, it does a lot better. And uh, it's a whole lot more comfortable to ride in than the TN ever was. So, this tractor is, is a pretty comfortable tractor. It's not as comfortable as the T5, but it's, it is a very comfortable tractor to ride in all day. The seat is good in it. I do have the air suspension seat, which has better better uh, armrests and stuff on it. Rides better than the spring suspension seat. The spring suspension seat has a short armrest. And as, as a matter of fact, this tractor came from the factory with a spring suspension seat in it. And I wanted the air ride seat. And they just happened to have another tractor on the lot had the air ride seat in it that I wanted. So they, uh, the dealer switched it out for me. Of course, I had to pay the difference between the air ride seat and the spring seat, but uh, I didn't, you know, it wasn't, I didn't have to buy the whole air seat to put in it, which was good. But I guess the more soul that buys the tractor I sold the seat out of, good spring seat <laughs> but I really wanted the air seat because it really makes a difference in a long day's work and these armrests are on this on this seat are way way better they're longer and they're adjustable uh, the armrests on the, on the spring suspension seat for this tractor are just like what was in my T4 that I had with the tractor before I got the T5 I hated them armrests. They weren't long enough. Uh, they were back. They were cut off about probably four inches shorter than what these are, and they weren't high enough either. So basically, they were useless. You couldn't put your elbow. I mean, you couldn't put your arm on it. The elbow couldn't even get on it. So for me, anyway. If you're looking at this tractor and thinking about buying one, keep that in mind. You may want to get the air seat because it's, it's a lot better. Uh, not only in the air ride, but the armrest also. But it's about uh, 8.30 now, and I still got a lot of hay to mow. It's going to get dark be able to see me very good so I'm going to go ahead and shut the video down for now and uh, hope y'all enjoy this one we'll see you on the next one talk to you later alright I'm in the last field I don't know if you can see me or it or, or what's going on out here the lights on the back of this tractor aren't the best in the world but I'm running, you probably can't see that either, but I'm running nine miles per hour in this field, and this is a good flat field. So, this tractor will, in a flat field, it will get it done. Nine miles per hour is, is getting it done mowing hay, so. Um, just thought I would just show you that, even though you probably can't see me. I to add this one little bit into the video here. That this is the best field I've got. It's uh, it's not 
not really hay wise it's not but it's i mean it's got really good hay and it's, it's a whole lot of timothy in it i mean it's it's good hay i am not saying it's not but it's probably not the best hay i've got but as far as land wise as far as driving the tractor on it being flat it's not perfectly flat but it's it's probably not 25 foot difference in elevation from one end to the other it's it's about a I don't know, quarter mile long. It's uh, about 10 acres here. Uh, it's, it's longer than it is wide by a little bit. But it's almost square, or it's almost a rectangle, perfect rectangle, but it's not quite. It's, it's a little bit wider in the middle than it is on the ends. But uh, it's really nice to mow and get up hay in. And, I don't know what I'd do if I had more fields like it. I'd probably get more land to do if all my fields were this easy to do. Uh, but anyway, nine miles per hour mowing with the Massey on a, on good flat land. We want, I, I hadn't tried one more gear higher, but you're getting up into the the road gears when you get up, when you go up one more gear. Cause it jumps from. Uh, second high is 6.5 miles per hour. And when you go from there to third high, you're at 9 miles per hour. You go up again, and I, I think you're around 13 miles per hour. So that's a little too fast, uh, in my opinion, to be mowing. I don't know that it was pulling in that gear anyway, but it's pulling it in third high just fine on the flat ground. So, it does have the power to get the get the hay mowed. You get on steep ground, you gotta gear down, but it will do it. Anyway, it's doing really good and I'm pleased with it. That's the main thing. So Alright. Gonna get the rest of this hay mode. What time get to be? Ten o'clock at night. Ten o'clock. I got another hour of mowing to do and then I can go home. Alright, we'll see y'all later. Again.